Okay, today we are going to learn how to turn a decimal into a fraction. So if you want to follow along, we're on page 22 in the book that we have. Okay, and you can just ignore the first top, the first half of the page because we are going to be doing that next week. So we just want to talk about turning a decimal into a fraction. There's two types of decimals. The first type is a terminating decimal. Terminating means it does not go on forever, it does not repeat. Okay, so here's some examples. The first one we have is 0.4. The way that you turn a decimal into a fraction is you count how many numbers are after the decimal place. So in this case, there is one number after the decimal place. So we're going to put this number on the top of our fraction. And then since there was only one number, we are going to put a one with one zero after it. Okay, the reason that we put a 10 underneath is if you remember, this is the tenths place. After the decimal, the first number that we come to is called the tenths place. So if there's just one number in the tenths place, we put the number that we see behind the decimal over the number 10. So there's one number here after the decimal, which means there is one zero here. Okay, so here's an example number two. Notice there are two numbers after the decimal, and so we put two numbers under our fraction because this is the tenths, hundredths place. So since this number is in the hundredths place, we put the number five over 100. And then of course you can always simplify your fractions. Don't forget to do that. 4 tenths, if we divide 4 by 2, we get 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 5 one hundredths, 5 divided by 5 is 1, and 100 divided by 5 is 20. So you want to find the biggest number that will go into both the top and the bottom and divide to, to simplify. Here's another example, example number 3. Notice we have the tenths, hundredths, thousandths place. There are three numbers after the decimal, so we're going to put three zeros with a one in front of it. The thousandths place means the 34 goes over the thousand, 1,000. If you have a number in front of the decimal, that number just goes right out in front of the fraction like this. So it would be 1 and 34 thousandths. Okay, and the biggest number that can go into both 34 and 1,000 is a 2. So we divide by 2, we get 17 on the top, divide by 2 on the bottom, and we get 500. Okay, now if you have a repeating decimal, that's going to be a little bit different. We call these our magical nines. Okay, if you have a repeating decimal, you're going to use a 9 or a 99 or a 999 on the bottom. So we're not going to use tens, hundreds, thousands if it's repeating. We're going to use nines instead. So here we have 0.3 repeating. What we want to do with our nines is we want to look how many numbers are under the repeat bar. Here's our repeat sign right here on the top. There's only one number under that. So on the top, we put our 3, and then since there is one number under the bar, we put 1, 9 on the bottom of our fraction. Okay, so on example 2, there are two numbers be underneath our repeat line. So we're going to put two 9s on the bottom of our fraction, and the 56 just goes on the top. In this example, number three, we have a five out in front. Remember, if there's a number out in front, it just goes in front of the fraction, okay? And then we have zero, zero, five. That's three numbers underneath the repeat, okay? So since there are three numbers underneath the repeat bar, we're gonna put three nines underneath the five.